What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel today on The Hard Count. Lincoln Riley is gone to USC, and we're going to break it all down and then some. Welcome into CFB with JD, the people's channel for all things college football content on YouTube. Y'all drive the show. Armstrong, Sims, Jack McKenzie do the heavy lifting. News broke in a very big way yesterday. Lincoln Riley said deuces to Oklahoma and is gone to USC. That news is, from my understanding, official. He's 55 and 10. Four college football playoff appearances, no wins, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's just break down this entire saga, because I said it before the show started to Armstrong and Jack. College football is the best reality TV show that exists in the in the world. Okay, so let's just start there. The saga of Lincoln Riley is as follows. Going into this game, I put out a poll on Twitter and said, hey, is this going to be Lincoln Riley's last game? Got over 100 votes. 60% of you said this would be his last game, so tip of the cap to y'all. Also, follow me on Twitter, at J.D. Pakel. So, okay, so we go into this last game. We're kind of thinking he might be leaving, but the thought across the board was it would be LSU. There was reports of LSU shelling out like $96 million for the boy to leave to Baton Rouge. I actually, I don't pretend to be a, a sources guy. Like, that's not really where I'm at, honestly, in, in my career. But I do know somebody close to LSU has spoke with him. He said 60% chance that Lincoln Riley was going to be announced as the LSU head coach on Sunday. He said the only thing that could potentially keep him from doing that would just be in the locker room. He just says, hey, I can't leave my boys. Can't leave my guys. I have you know emotional ties to OU. That was, in a lot of people's mind, the way that it could go. And those were kind of the two forks in the road. Goes to LSU or just has too much love for OU and stays at OU. Obviously, neither of those happened. They lose to Oklahoma State, 33-37. No Big 12 championship. Post game, he had this to say. I'm not going to be the next head coach at LSU. So, obviously, anybody in their right mind would use common sense and say, okay, no, LSU, cool, he wants to be at OU, which was a lot of people's opinion to start with was he wants to be at OU, don't try to outthink the system and be happier than you already are right now. You have a great thing going at OU, you have a national power, uh, you have one of the best players, if not the best player next year in college football in Caleb Williams. You have a lot of things going for you if you're Lincoln Rally. You've built out a great program, took over a great program. Life is good. Not so fast, my friend, Alali Corso. It comes out the next day, yesterday being Sunday, that he's headed to L.A. And this was just a bombshell. I was currently uh, on the freeway when this was happening and standstill traffic, text a friend because I don't have service to get on Twitter. I say, is this real? He says, yes. It's been reported by ESPN. LTE coverage comes back. We're back in business on the highway. Again, still standstill traffic, so I'm not driving and checking Twitter. Wouldn't do that. But he releases a statement. It's all over the place. This was the most interesting sentence to me in the entirety of the statement he released. He says, this was a personal decision solely based on my willingness to take on a new challenge and I felt like it was the right opportunity for me and my family to do that. So what's he saying there? He's basically saying, hey, USC, you can do a lot of things at USC. And if I go to USC and I rebuild that place, I'm the man. And not only am I the man, I'm not the man in a place called Norman, Oklahoma. I'm, in, I'm the man in a place called Los Angeles, California. I'm not knocking Norman, Oklahoma. I've never been there. I'm sure it's a phenomenal place. But Los Angeles, California is the epicenter in a lot of places of the United States. This is what it is. So here's what we know, or here's what was reported, I should say, from Bruce Feldman by The Athletic. Here's what went into his decision to leave for USC. One, he likes the idea of LA. We already talked about that. You're the man in LA. Not a lot you can't do. Two, the appeal of a, re of a rebuild at USC. Again, kind of going back to the same point. If you rebuild USC into a national power like they were before in the Pete Carroll days, if you make them a national player, I mean, the world is your oyster. College football is your oyster. You know how easy it is to recruit to L.A. and you're already a great recruiter like Lincoln Riley? Imagine recruiting to a winning USC. I mean, the car drives itself at that point. Tesla. Lastly, he said the administration is now aligned. Which was, for most of us, we thought that was the reason why USC wouldn't be able to get the guy they wanted. We were all under the impression, okay, USC, yeah, they got the brand, they're in LA, they got a lot of things going for them, but the administration isn't willing to pony up and put what needs to be put into the program. I have a friend that graduated from USC not too long ago, played on the football team, and that was his sentiment. He was saying, we're expected to compete with these major programs, 
but the administration, the people in charge, the people in charge of putting us into position to compete with those major programs don't want to put in the resources. So in that way, you're saying, okay, how are you going to get the right guy in charge? How are you going to get the right guy at the helm to do that for your football program? Well, apparently Lincoln Riley must have had some really great conversations with the administration, must have felt real good about where he stood with Mike Bond, and must have felt really good about the way they're going to trend going forward with resources that he feels confident, okay, there's going to be some things put in place now to make some noise at SC. And ladies and gents, if that's the case, buckle up, grab onto the person next to you because USC is going to take the college football world for a ride. If USC has their priorities in line with the football program, they are going to be extremely, extremely dangerous, not just for the Pac-12. Like, yes, this will change the Pac-12 perception if Oregon's good and USC's good and they're competing for a spot in the college football playoff. Across the entire complexion of the national college football landscape, this will change things. It will change things, like I said, in the playoff race. It will change things in recruiting. For USC, you have one of the best recruiters in the country now in the most, arguably the most, fertile recruiting grounds in the country. Lincoln Riley was already recruiting USC, or excuse me, recruiting Southern California better than USC was with Clay Helton. You want to look at the guys that they had coming at Oklahoma. It was going to be Malachi Nelson, the best quarterback, I should say the second best quarterback behind Arch Manning from uh, Southern California. They also have Relik Brown, who is now making it clear he may be open to making a pivot. He's a running back out of modern day. He's going to be in the 2022 cycle. They got dudes, okay? They got dudes probably coming to USC. Again, neither of those are officially reported. They're coming to USC, but they have since backed off in some sense or fashion of their Oklahoma commitment. So you got one of the best recruiters with access to some of the best talent. If they can lock down the in-state talent and then recruit nationally, oh, USC is going to be a problem, like I mentioned. Lincoln Riley is a quarterback whisperer. You don't believe me? Look at the track record. Kyler Murray, Baker Mayfield, Jalen Hurts, who a lot of people knocked for his arm talent, plays under Lincoln Riley, does wonders. If you're able to recruit a quarterback, great classes will be built out around that. And Caleb Williams... The report was he was willing to walk on at Oklahoma because Brock Vandergriff was apparently taking their quarterback spot for a minute, decommitted, Caleb Williams becomes the guy, all that. But Caleb Williams was willing to walk on to play for Lincoln Riley. That should speak volumes for how highly these recruits think of him, especially quarterback recruits. Some of the best quarterbacks in the country, look across the board, C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young, J.T. Daniels when he was playing. Some of the best quarterback talent comes out of California. You're going to put Lincoln Riley in their backyard? That's a problem. So for USC, all this tells me is the right hire can change things in a hurry. There is the resources from a recruiting standpoint. It sounds like the resources now being put into the football program to change things in a hurry. Matt Leiner had a tweet. He said, I was six and six at USC. Pete Carroll's first year weren't that good. Next year, we're 10 and two. You get the right guy at USC with the right firepower around him. Things can get going. Things, I mean, it, it's like an avalanche. It just starts with a snowflake. Is Lincoln Riley that snowflake to start the avalanche? Weird metaphor, but it might hold true. So let's look at the other side of things. For Oklahoma, you just lost one of the best coaches in college football right now. That's okay, because guess what? You still have one of the best jobs in college football right now. The SEC going to the SEC, I think that's going to attract the right guy more so than keep the right guy away. I'm not saying Lincoln Riley left because they're going to the USC. I actually think that's probably an overplayed narrative. I'm not really on board with that. Like Kanye West says, I guess we'll never know. But I think it's going to attract the right competitor. You're going to get the guy that wants to take Oklahoma into the SEC and continue to allow them to be a power. You have the resources. You still have a lot of the great recruits that are still on board. If you can keep them on board, that's going to be a big thing. Even more so, it's going to be a big deal to keep the guys that are already on this roster on board. So you got to re-recruit your roster and keep the recruits that are committed on board. But I'm looking at Caleb Williams. Hey, are you staying? Because like I said, you committed to Lincoln Riley. Spencer Rattler already said he's gone. We did a video on that earlier in the year, so we saw that one coming, as did everybody else that has eyeballs and cares about college football. Can you keep your guys on board? Can you get the right guys on board? Because there's a lot of things at Oklahoma that should be attractive to a high school recruit. Make the college football playoff pretty frequently. Outside of this year, you win your conference pretty frequently. There's a winning culture, winning tradition. Who's, who's to say what's going to be left of the staff? Who's to say who's going to be the next head coach there? Subscribe to this channel because we're doing a video on that later this week. Our hot board for Oklahoma potential next head coaches. Again, subscribe. Um, but there's a lot of reason to not be too discouraged to Oklahoma. 
You lost Lincoln Riley. The sun will rise tomorrow. You're going to be fine. You're going to the best conference in all of college football as of right now. You're going to have to go toe-to-toe with Nick Saban, but you're more prepared for this fight than your counterpart is at Texas. That's it for us here at The Hard Count. The party will continue to roll on. Follow me on Twitter, at JD Pakel. Subscribe to the channel. Again, lots of awesome videos coming down the pipe, courtesy of myself, Armstrong Sims, and Jack McKenzie, and most exclusively, you. Like I said, party rolls on. We will see y'all next time.